While the security of Europe is in a deep crisis, Bulgaria will go to the elections for the fifth time in two years. Joining us for this special global conversation, the two contenders, Kirill Petkov and Boyko Borisov. Mr. Petkov, thank you for joining us. This is the fifth election in two years. What will you do if you become prime minister to avoid the sixth one? Because uh, the instability of Bulgaria could be also a risk for the rest of the European Union and the western flank of Europe in times of war. Five elections is uh, way too much for any democratic country to go through. But at the same time, what I'm seeing now on the fifth election is something different. Uh, unity is starting to form around the idea of pro-European, strong Bulgaria in a way that was not happening in the previous four. We don't want Bulgaria to have another election. We want our fundamentals to be changed from a um, new judiciary system that's actually fair and also to stop the corruption as well. We believe that actually having a clear, transparent minority government is better than a murky coalition that nobody knows who controls what. A minority government must uh, negotiate with the oppositions or with parties that are not members of uh, the coalition, uh, step by step, any single reform, any single law, any single measure. I think most political parties realize that change is coming. Uh, hopefully it's on this election, but they realize that change is coming. So most people, including, I believe, on the GERB parties, they're starting to re recognize that one way is to participate in the change by just waiting it out and some political force like ours to take over the whole power and just completely change it, or to be part of the change and monitor it on, on the process. So, for example, for the chief prosecutor. The prosecutor is a big problem, as you said, uh, but at the same time, do you think, again, that with few numbers in the parliament would be, you will be able to remove it, to remove this? So that, that's a big question. So we'll do it in two steps. The first step is what's required by the Recovery and Resilience Plan. By the way, this condition was put by our government. It was not a total remember, re yes. requirement from the EU. Uh, but it says that the chief prosecutor sh should have a judicial oversight. There should be a judge picked at random that can actually investigate the chief prosecutor. That's unheard of up to now. Because right mm. now, as the chief prosecutor says, only God is above me. Mm. Now it will not be God about him only, it will be also a random judge that will monitor his steps. That's the basics of a rule of law. The... Exactly. Okay. And so uh, what we're believing that this first step will pass is because uh, 5 billion euros are tied to this reform. So it will be very hard for a political party to explain why they don't want to have these 5 billion euros for the Bulgarian citizens uh, by not willing to do it. Could you tell us? Uh, why there is this direct link between uh, uh, this centralization of investigation with the chief prosecutor and the corruption system. Uh, there is no current control on the internal feeling of a prosecutor whether he should investigate or not. It's a trial, internal trial in his own mind. And this we need to also put control of. But the bigger problem is is that the chief prosecutor mm -hmm. has control of every single prosecutor. And he can send them on the far uh, borders of the country mm -hmm. and says, next four years, go investigate there. Uh, so therefore, no normal prosecutor with normal incentive structure would like to start any investigation against any of the big corrupt scandals. So the country needs stability and needs reforms. Would you be ready to create a grand coalition with GERB and with Boyko Borisov in the name of uh, these major challenges that uh, uh, must be taken on by Bulgaria. We're willing to show a positive program mm -hmm. that has many coinciding politics and say we're going to move the country forward. In the parliament, where all these things need to be voted, not only with Borisov, with all the MPs. But, but you were ready to detain him some years ago, mm -hmm. and for the reform uh, of a judiciary also, and now you are asking them to cooperate to a reform of a judiciary. We want to have a free and fair judicial system, and that would allow Borisov 
to feel, I believe, more comfortable because I personally feel that his biggest fear is that we want to change one versus the other. Now we're saying, let's democratize the, the prosecution office, let's have judicial oversight, mm -hmm. let's have so that everybody feels that there is real fair treatment. And by the way, while he's doing this, he'll be in parliament if he decides to, and he has uh, immunity. The Bulgarian uh, society, uh, the Bulgarian public opinion, is extremely polarized between, say, uh, pro-Russian sentiments and pro-Western uh, sentiments, orientations. What do you think to do? See, when we entered into power, the sentiment was over 60% of the people were uh, Russian-loving uh, people. That was it, we saw it in the post. Today, uh, because of what's happening, in the war, it's only about 22, 25. Huge drop from high 60s to, to low 20s. And two things uh, were related to this. First of all, people started to differentiate between Russia's history and current Putin's regime. Mm -hmm. Second, which was more important, a lot of the Bulgarians were afraid that we cannot survive without Russia. We thought, oh, we're fully gas dependent, uh, we're fully oil dependent. So there was an embedded fear. With Gazprom, we showed that Bulgaria can diversify. We're not dependent on Gazprom, now we're at 0%. Uh, so this fear went away. And I believe that this is probably one of the biggest progress that our society has made. I'm not saying pro-Russia, anti-Russia. I'm saying that there is no fear. No fear to become, to take an independent position on important things. And what I also saw is in the developed article that came out, that said Bulgaria was one of the first countries to, to help Ukraine, um, people felt a sense of pride. A pride that this time Bulgaria was on the right side of history, was early on and was recognized. The president of the Republic uh, was not very happy about uh, your decision to sell ammunition and uh, weaponry to Ukraine. Very clearly here, we, and I think we, everybody understood what we did. Because it was early on in the, in the war, uh, what we did is we worked with our US, UK, Romania and Polish partners. So Bulgaria actually sold to the US and the UK the weapons. So we didn't take the direct risk in the early on to Ukraine. They provided these weapons for free to the Ukrainians and they had, and it was really a win-win. So the Ukrainians got key weapons early on, so we represent a very big part of them. Uh, the US was able to have a, 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 a stable supplier in the UK uh, for this, and Bulgaria industry did really well at the same time. So that's, a, for example, a specific case of a win-win and being on the right side of history without taking a specific direct risk. Yeah, but the, again, the, the president is still, uh, Roman Radev, is still against it. Yeah, he's against it, and I think that uh, his version of, of peace is not what the majority of Bulgarians believe. His version of peace is, let's say, if somebody attacks Bulgaria and takes the territory all the way to Varna and says, let's have peace, and, let's, and more than that, let's not get any support from the EU so that we have peace. That's not peace. First, the attacking country should go back to where they started from, and then we can have negotiations. Otherwise, it's not peace, it's really uh, authorizing occupation. At the same time, uh, a Russian company, Lukoil, still owns officially uh, the most important refinery, oil refinery in the country, in Burgas. Uh, so, uh, there are still strong relationship with Russia and interest and economic True. interest. True. What we did for, for this specific interest of Bulgaria, because we don't have a second refinery. And even though Black Sea is a sea, uh, Bosphorus is a high risk situation because it can be stopped at any point. And because the Russian um, equipment is, was created to run with on Russian oil, and there needs to be sizable shifts, uh, on the equipment in order to start working with Brent oil, uh, we were able to talk with our EU partners and get one and a half years of derogation to have this supply. So this is what the Bulgarians are seeing now. Thank you very much.
So according to Kirill Petkov, the key reform is the reform of justice. But uh, what does his contender Boyko Borisov think about it? Mr. Boyko Borisov, thank you for joining us. According to the European Union, and not only the European Union, the reform of justice is the key reform to struggle effectively against corruption. Do you agree with that? Every system is continuously reformed to improve and face new challenges. Naturally, I agree. The center of the reform of a justice system is the reform of a general prosecutor office. Would you agree to reduce, to drastically reduce the power of uh, the general prosecutor? We have a very well-developed system of judicial reform in which the watchword is the institution's control over the prosecutor general, and this will be adopted in the next parliament. So, basically, you think that uh, anyway the system must change because uh, uh, if you think that uh, all these activity were related to corruption and were related to so you think that the problem is, again, related to the system, to the judiciary system, isn't it? That's why there's a national consensus now that the system needs to change. In the name of reforms, in the name of uh, urgency, of the emergency of this moment with the war in Ukraine, do you think that it would be possible for you to make a grand coalition with the Kirill Petkov party? continue the change. I don't know if it can be formed, but I know that if it is formed very quickly, Bulgaria will get out of the political crisis very quickly. Thanks to the self-control of the parties within the coalition, many right and good things will be done for Bulgaria. This is from the National Statistical Institute of Bulgaria, the official institutions. It says that in five months, Bulgaria has become three times more economically dependent on Russia. It's all in these graphs. We've imported Russian goods worth nearly 5 billion levs, or 2.5 billion euros, an increase of 158 per cent. Okay. What, what, what would you do to change this uh, trends that of course, we have to check anyway. We're just not going to let our rivals do this. We're going to import oil other than Russian, as we're already doing. Then we pass a law in the parliament to prevent the import of Russian oil. Where this oil is coming from, so? There's plenty of oil in the world. It's important it's not Russian. I think Iraqi now. Moreover, we in Alexandropoulos know we have a 20% state ownership in the LNG terminal. Right now, we're working very hard for an oil pipeline from the Alexandropoulos refinery that would make it even easier to refuel with non-Russian oil. But uh, the refinery is still owned by Lukoil, legally speaking. Yes, but the rules in the country are made by the state, not by some company. My political party voted for 100% diversification, not only from Gazprom, but also from Russian nuclear fuel for Goslody. Do you think you made some mistakes in the past, from this point of view, in maybe uh, constructing too many ties with Russia for the gas supply? Sorry, I'm going to disagree with you. The man who stopped South Stream and the government that stopped it was my government. So you were against? Yes, of course, that's why I stopped it. Since the beginning. Putin and Lavrov Ankara. Back then, Putin and Lavrov went to Ankara and Athens and drove it through Turkey and Greece. Do you remember? If we go back in time, the main flow that was supposed to come from Azerbaijan onwards was Nabucco, which went through Bulgaria. Nabucco West. The European Union cancelled Nabucco and ran the gas through Turkey and Greece, bypassing Bulgaria, and I disagreed. If I'm not wrong, Nabucco was from Turkmenistan. 
Trans-Caspian. That's how they are, Turkmenistan, Caspian Sea, Azerbaijan. Yes, Azerbaijan. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your, the source was Turkmenistan. As it can't come out of Turkmenistan, we had the Southern Gas Corridor and was going to go through Bulgaria to Austria. Anyway, Bulgaria still remains a strongly polarized country with the public opinion divided uh, between, say, uh, pro-Russian sentiment and a pro-Western sentiment. Uh, how would you win over the pro-Russian sentiment to vote for you? Geb is losing 10% of voters due to our pro-Ukrainian policy. Before the war in Ukraine began, we tried to have a balanced policy on the Balkans. From the moment Putin attacked Ukraine, we had no sentiment and no change in position. Putin is the aggressor, not the Russian people, and Putin must be stopped. This is a big difference. Sentiment is sentiment, but the moment they attack the innocent Ukrainian people, we have no hesitation whatsoever. And who believes me? There are hundreds of thousands of Gab people behind me. When Russia says that uh, what's happening in Ukraine is an existential threat to its very existence, uh, is that because they are ready to escalate the, to escalate the conflict or uh, do you think it's a bluff? Whether it's a bluff, I don't know. For the last two years, President Putin has behaved like a different person. The West, of which I'm a part, should not allow this to happen. Of course, all diplomatic means must also be used to stop this bloodshed. People are dying there. Do you think that Bulgaria is threatened by this war, directly threatened? There is a risk of uh, a real conflict for your country or not? Bulgaria is a member of NATO and there's Article 5. I know, but at the same time, if we look at other countries that are covered by the Article 5 and by NATO, like the Baltic countries, Poland, they feel particularly threatened by uh, the risk of extension of conflict. I'm just asking if you are, if you share their point of view, to be among the most threatened country of NATO. Of course, the risk exists. But if we don't take the risk, it would mean allowing Putin to come to Bulgaria, to Poland, tomorrow. That's why all the laws we've passed are for full diversification away from Russia, in the energy sector, armaments and everything. These are the fifth election in two years, so a source of instability. Uh, what would you do in order to avoid a sixth one in the next months? The respect our enemies have for me is clear, enemies from abroad. Enemies in this case, however, are irrelevant. I've been three times prime minister, but I hope that after the elections on Sunday, with the political leaders who are claiming to look like Euro-Atlantic supporters, even if they lie a little bit, we can form a government together. Now, the economy, the economy, because uh, ruling a country is about economy, especially in uh, emergency situation. What is the state of a, of a Bulgarian economy? Because the GDP was expected to grow more than what is actually doing. The Bulgarian National Bank says that there's a huge debt, 90 billion levs. That's 45 billion and something euros of foreign debt right now. In one year, it has risen by 10 percent. When I was prime minister, along with Estonia, we held the record for the lowest foreign debt. How about the euro? Do you think that the country is ready, will be ready soon to, uh, to adopt the euro or not? When I was ruling the country, we entered the European Banking Union and the Euro Area Waiting Room. Others have to think I'm a man of action. We would already be in the Euro Area, along with Croatia. Anyway, even with these figures, you will soon uh, recover, so basically, and be able to adopt the Euro. I've brought the country into the European Banking Union. If I get the chance, I'll bring the country into the euro area as well. Two years ago, we had all the technical criteria covered. Two years on, there's chaos. Thank you.